Concepts is making its way to the Windows platform and here's what you need to know to get familiar with it. Hi, my name is Lasse and in this video I will introduce you to a new way of putting your thoughts down on a Windows device. Concepts is an advanced sketching and ideation app used by architects, designers, illustrators and other creative professionals around the world. Today I'll walk you through the whole range of functionality in Concepts 1.0 for Windows. The first thing to know is that Concepts itself is constantly growing through your feedback and iteration. And over the next year you'll see a lot of new functionality as we get closer to being a complete platform across your devices. The device I'll be using here is the top half of a Surface Book with a second generation Surface Pen as a stylus. Let's get started by having a look at the workspace. At first launch, you'll be given a few demo drawings to explore. To start from scratch, tap the plus button at top. From here on out, the app will always launch to the last drawing you left off, so you can quickly get back to it without having to look for the file first. On the top left corner, we have the tool wheel, which contains eight configurable tools. The tool wheel is scalable and movable, so you can freely place it anywhere on the canvas. Just tap and drag to move it around and pinch on the wheel to size it up or down to your liking. Activating a tool happens by simply tapping on it. On the inner ring of the tool wheel we have three brush settings, size, opacity and smoothing. Tap on the top one and you'll get to adjust the size value of your active brush. All three brush settings come with four preset values that can be predefined for quicker access. Just tap on one to activate and slide to adjust. In order to see how these adjustments reflect to the look of your strokes, you'll have to test it on the infinite canvas, which really is the best way of telling how the brush performs. Especially so when you're applied smoothing, which as the name suggests, smoothens your lines. At the center of the tool wheel, we can see the current color and opacity of the brush. Tapping on it opens the Copic color wheel that consists of 357 colors, optimized for the use of artists, designers and illustrators. Your set of brushes on the tool wheel is file specific and you can alter it by tapping on an already active tool. This will open the brush menu where you can see a list of several brush sets available. On the top row we have the default brush and tool set that comes free with the download. In case you want to expand your brush library, there's a place to pick up more brushes below. Finally on the side here we have two arrows, these are undo and redo. There's a great shortcut for undo by two finger tapping on the screen as well. You can undo as far back as you like, as long as you haven't closed the app or the file in between. Panning and zooming happens by using two fingers as well. Place your fingers on the screen, spread to zoom in, pinch to zoom out, and slide around to pan. And as I mentioned earlier, Concepts comes with an infinite canvas, which is our way of saying you can extend your paper in any way you need it, as far as you need to go. On the top right you can see the current zoom and angle values you're at. These can be set manually by tapping on them. and by double tapping on them, the app will set you back to the starting point. Let's move on to the functionality that really makes this app stand out. The thing that makes Concept special is the fact that all the strokes you draw on the canvas are so-called vector paths. This means that they are not just pixels burned onto the canvas, but individual lines that can be selected and then manipulated at any point. Let's say we think that this stroke is too thin. What you can do is tap and hold on your finger or the stylus, move the crosshair that appears onto the stroke until it highlights and let go. Now that we have the stroke selected, we can go back to the tool wheel, open the size value and simply adjust the width. You can also move the stroke around, scale it, 
or do other commands from up here like duplicate or mirror your selection. Deselecting happens by tapping anywhere on the canvas. You can also select more than one stroke at once. Maybe we'd like these two strokes to be the same color. Again, start with a tap and hold, move the crosshair on the first stroke and tap again with another finger without lifting the first one. Then move on to the other stroke, tap again and release. Now we can open the color wheel and change the color for both at once. Another way of making selections is by using the lasso selection. Tap and hold and you can toggle the option from below here. Then just paint over the strokes you'd like to select. Optionally, you can access the alternate selection method by tap and holding and then laying down another finger. You can always add or remove items from your selection by just reselecting them. In case you're not feeling comfortable with the gesture based interaction, there's also an arrow shaped selection tool available in the brush menu. Next up we have layers, and to help to demonstrate, let's start a new drawing. Tap on the drop down menu at the top left corner and you'll be given the new drawing option along with a bunch of other commands. Notice that we've included standard keyboard shortcuts as well. Tap new drawing and the app will prompt you to save your current work to your desired destination. By the way, once a drawing has been given a file destination, you won't ever have to concern yourself about saving it manually, as the app will always do that automatically for you. Anyway, the layers panel. Just like the tool wheel, this one is also movable and by default it sorts your brush strokes automatically like this. You can choose to ignore the layers completely and the app will lay down your strokes per brush which will make it easier to adjust things later if you want. You can add more layers by tapping over here and reordering layer happens by a tap, hold and drag. But take notice that the moment you start adjusting things manually, the app will toggle your layering into manual mode. This can always be turned back to automatic, but let's keep it on manual for now. This way all the strokes I draw will be placed on the active layer and activating a layer happens by a simple tap. Each layer comes with a set of layer adjustments. Let me open an earlier drawing of mine to show you how those work. Opening an existing drawing happens by tapping on the top left corner, tap open, and in this case I do not want to save the current drawing. Select your file and open. Alright, here you can see that all the elements of the drawing are separated each on their own layer. I can move them around and you'll see how they start overlapping each other. By tapping on an already active layer, we get to the layer adjustments. At the bottom, we have an opacity slider. By tapping the arrow, we can select all contents of this layer and make adjustments to them collectively. Optionally, we could lasso select the whole content of this layer. Just make sure you got the active layer toggled from the filter below to only make selections from the currently active layer. Otherwise, the selection will pick up things from other layers as well. Next up we have a lock, which prevents you from making any accidental adjustments. Duplicate makes a copy of the layer and its contents. There's the delete command. Merge, which will combine your layer with the one below it. And finally rename, which really helps in being organized while working with several layers. Once you're happy with your sketches and would like to make an image file of it, open the drop down menu again and tap export. This will currently allow you to export your drawings as a JPEG or a PNG file. More options are coming soon and we'd really like to know what you would find useful, whether it's bitmap or vector formats you're dealing with. Below the export command we have settings. First there's some options for setting the background of your workspace. Then we have a few stylus options. You can adjust the range of pressure response you get. 
Also, you can define the one finger action when using an active stylus such as the Surface Pen. For example, if we choose the Pen Canvas option, the finger will be reserved for panning around the screen, and the only thing drawing lines will be the stylus. On the bottom here, we have some gesture options. This slider affects the amount of time required for the selection tools to activate when tap and holding the screen as I demonstrated earlier. Personally, I like to keep this at 0.3 seconds, but if you're new to concepts, I would recommend setting this around a half a second and then lower it gradually once you get used to it. Here we have the Pro Shop. By downloading the basic free version of Concepts, you get a good solid experience, enough for getting familiar with the UI and test out the drawing experience with a basic toolset. The Essentials purchase allows you to make selections and manipulate strokes as I demonstrated before. You also get infinite layers, PNG export and lots of other features to come in the future updates. You can also choose to subscribe. This option will unlock everything including all the brush packs and all other content we'll be adding to the app in the future like object libraries, team sharing, PDF support along other things. If you were left with some questions or got stuck on something, check out the help section where you can find our very detailed online manual or get in touch with us directly from Ask Us Anything. Feel free to comment below and remember to leave us a great rating on the Microsoft Store. Subscribe on this channel for more tutorials and other videos, it's totally free. Until the next one, bye bye.